Hey, I'm back. Randall Schwartz here with uh, various dart and flutter tips for my dart and flutter channel. Uh, been seeing a question pop up rather frequently. I look at Stack Overflow and Reddit and the Flutter community, um, uh, Slack, uh, and another couple of other Slacks and stuff. And I'm always looking for questions. I was trying to figure out what's going on. And one of the things I've seen show up remarkably three times in three days is why isn't my future builder working? Or why isn't my stream builder work not working? Well, I was playing around with it a little bit and I usually had the right answer like right away because there's a common mistake that you make with something like stream builder or future builder. Now these both apply the same way. I'm going to demonstrate it with stream builder because uh, it's much more obvious what's going on and we can see the duration of time that the stream is uh, uh, bypassing because it's putting out stuff every once in a while. So I've taken the venerable counter app here and I've added a few lines to it. So let's uh, overlook, uh, let's look over, not overlook, that's the opposite meaning. Let's look over the lines that I've added to that. One of them is this particular cool thing here. So what I'm doing with this is I'm creating a stream of integers uh, against a global function named numbers uh, from a global function named numbers and I'm doing this I think rather cleverly I actually like this uh, approach stream periodic which will take a duration and a callback the duration here is one second that's the duration between the elements now this is an infinite list this is an infinite thing you have to shut it down somehow. I've got my own way of shutting it down, but I'll get there in a second. And then it calls this callback with a single parameter. In this case, it's uh, the numbers from zero to infinity. If you just let it keep running, it would generate numbers up to infinity. I won't be demonstrating that today. Uh, but I want actually one through 10, not zero through whatever. So I just add one to it. And that's the value that gets returned as each event on this periodic stream. Now, I've got that over here, so that's the part that leads up to here, okay, it's my stream periodic, and then I've got this other thing on here, dot take is a method on a number of different uh, structures in Dart, uh, in this case, on a stream, it says, take that many values, in this case 10, and pass them out as the output of the stream that take is creating internally. You don't see that, but it's in there. And as soon as it gets to that many items, it automatically uh, quits. And it quits taking the other stream with it, and uh, it closes down nicely. There's no extra um, stream close things that we have to do. Okay, so let's call this our function that we want to run uh, and use the value of in our display. Okay, the typical problem, right? We've got something that takes time. This could just as easily be a future with a, maybe a, um, uh, an HTTP request or something like that. But it's something that takes time. In this case, it takes uh, 10 seconds, actually. So uh, that's the thing I want to track. So the naive way that I see people do, and you'll see in a moment that it's wrong, is that they go, okay, we want this stream to be here. Now, This the rest of this is the counter app. This is, this is nothing new down here. All this stuff, that's stuff you see all the time. Uh, but here, this is added here, this stream builder. And the stream builder takes a stream, and we go, well, that's good. Uh, I have a stream. It's the stream that comes out of executing numbers, okay? And that goes in there. And then you put the builder function which has a context and a snapshot and for grins I'm going to be printing building SB building stream builder down here in the debug window at the bottom and then uh, we're going to go ahead and run this uh, and it's going to switch on connection state and if the state is none or waiting it's just gonna spin that old circle right yeah that's familiar circular progress indicator you're using it in a lot of places when you want async operations to be shown as async and then you've got connection state active and this is the good part this is where we're actually getting values in from the stream 
So we'll have data is, and you'll see in a moment, it's data is 1, data is 2, data is 3, and so on. Now, when the stream finally exits, finally says, I'm done, then it calls back with connection state done, the, uh, um, the stream builder calls back with. And we'll just change that to done at, and just to really make it stand out, I'll put an exclamation mark after that. Okay, so this is the widget that people will typically create, something that takes a stream or a future, future builder would just have future up here instead of stream, but the rest of this would actually all stay the same, pretty much, anyway. And uh, for some reason, of course, this always has to return a widget. The builder has to return a widget. So uh, at the end, this line is never reached, but I just return a container to keep everybody happy. Um, it'll never execute this code, though. I could, put, I could put a throw in there, I guess, and really say, should not have been here. Okay, rest of the code, like I say, is the same. All the same code from the standard counter app. Haven't done anything crazy. Now, just so we could start off in the middle and save some time, I've actually launched this in debug mode and hit this run app as a, as a uh, uh, breakpoint. So we'll turn the breakpoint off. And now I want you to watch over here on the right-hand side. So this is just after the app is up. This is in that, that crazy white screen that everybody always complains about. This is the thing you can fix by adding a splash screen. And then I'm going to go ahead, and I know one of these icons means continue. Okay, a couple things I want you to watch. First off, it's going to have the counter app. But above that will be the lines that come from the, uh, the uh, stream builder. So I think this is it, F5. Okay, there it is. But look, so yes, this is indeed updating the 7, 8, 9, and so on. Okay? Now, if I uh, hot reload, uh, I think that's hot reload. Hot reload, and restart. One of those is one of them. Uh, I'll do that one. Okay, yeah, and again, notice as we start, we are uh, we see the the circular spin. Okay, and watch for that because it's really important. So now we've actually reached the end of our stream. Our stream is happy. We're at the end. Uh, we've shown all the values that we could show for it. Let's increment the counter. Watch carefully. Watch carefully as I hit it. <gasps> Wait, why is the stream starting again? Why is the stream starting again? This is part of the problem. And even more bizarre, suppose I want to count quickly. Suppose I hit two, and then three, and then four, and then maybe five, six, seven. Look at that spinner. Look how often that spinner keeps coming up. We are restarting the stream from scratch every time we rebuild this page. And you can see it in the Flutter building SB down here. See, we've actually rebuilt that 41 times. So, this is a problem. The reason this is a problem is suppose that was, say, a future that was going out and hitting a website. Well, if you hit this plus button or you rebuild because you have an animation on the page, you're never going to get that response back from that website. It's not going to work. And this stream's not getting to 10 at any time, right? See, every time I hit build, it starts over. Okay, and here's the problem. Okay, so this is what people come to Stack Overflow with and, and all the other places that they can ask me questions. I love questions, by the way. It's not, that's not my complaint. My complaint is I would like people to think about how they just used Stream Builder or Future Builder. In this case, we've got stream of numbers. This is going to get re-executed every time we come into the build. And what have I said over and over again in most of my comments that I make to people? Imagine your build is being called 60 times a second. And you don't want anything expensive in there. You don't want anything that is changing state heavily. You don't want anything like I.O. And definitely you don't want a 10 second stream builder or stream. So here's what we need to do to fix it. We should, instead of handing the stream from something that is constructing the stream, we should first 
take the stream. Let's see where we've got it here. Here it is. We should take that stream. This is inside the state of this stateful widget. We should uncomment that code. Now, what am I doing here? I'm building the stream and assigning it to a state variable. I'm doing it during the constructor, so I don't need to call set, set state. It's already in the state. And then what I do is come down here. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Oh, where is it? I went past it. Okay. Oh, I guess I got rid of it. Oh, well, I got rid of the comments. That's right. So instead, what you should do here, let's comment this out. Now you're going to get to see me type. I knew there was going to be a time you'd see me type. And we're going to pull up uh, numbers. The variable there. Okay, look at the difference. Here, we're constructing the stream every time. Here, we're taking the value of this state variable called numbers, which is initialized once upon construction of the state to the output of our numbers uh, uh, stream creator. Now what happens when we run this? Well, let me save it, and let's see what happens when we do that first. Oh, where does it go for state? Oh, okay, so it spun. It, it held the 17, though. That was nice. And we're back. We did one spin, and then we had got all the way to 10. But watch. Increment. 18, 19. We're not restarting the stream. So that's the clue. If you've got a future builder or a stream builder, don't construct the future or stream right there in the builder. Instead, you need to move it out to a variable that you have access to or, um, you know, one of the, uh, like, provider or a river pod or something like that. River pod actually makes this even simpler, but I'm not going to show that today. Um, and uh, that, that does it. Now we have this stream that is created only once and does our proper thing. In fact, if we then hot restart this, I believe that's that, right? Well, we'll see. Um, we'll see the stream being fetched over again because it has to, because everything is reset at that point. Okay, so there we go. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and let's uh, crank this up a few times, and you'll again you'll notice one, two, three. Yeah, no problem. We're keeping the same stream. And then uh, let's do a hot reload. I think that's the other one here. When you hot reload, no visible change. And even if we go in and say change pushed to you uh, tapped the button. So again, to show that we're staying done at 10, even now when I hit save, there's my change there. But once again, no reload of the stream. So I hope that explains some of your um, problems you've had with Stream Builder and Future Builder because they both work the same way. Um, I love questions. Uh, I want more ideas about what to do for videos, so please leave that in the comments. Subscribe, of course. I'll be like everybody else. And there's so much other good stuff out there. i got to start linking some of my favorite channels to the uh, page here to see uh, what else I can talk about. All right, until later, uh, that's it for me.